Bitcoin has become a wildly popular investment among regular people and institutions alike. While there is still a long way to go before we see widespread adoption, it has already grown to unimaginable heights. From mere cents to ten thousands of dollars per coin, the cryptocurrency truly threw a wrench in the traditional monetary system. Our video today will cover some recent interview commentary from Michael Saylor, the mega successful tech CEO. You might be surprised at his view on crypto as a currency, so stick around for our analysis. Afterward, we'll break down how you, as an individual investor, can make the most out of your crypto. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Profit Protection, your go-to source to stay up to date on what the thought leaders in crypto, fintech, and digital asset markets are doing. If you've been enjoying our videos up to now, we would appreciate you leaving a like and subscribing, so we can continue to bring you high-quality updates and analysis. Thanks. Irish economist David McWilliams brought a heavy hitter to his podcast last week. MIT graduate and MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor joins him to talk about all sorts of investment concepts, particularly assets like property and crypto. One comment Saylor made that caught our attention was his preference for Bitcoin over real estate property as a holder of wealth. In fact, he seemed to be a bigger fan of Bitcoin for storing wealth than anything else. Here's the full quote. Where he breaks it down himself, referring to which asset to use for storing value, he pointed this out: property has been that solution. The problem with property is property has a maintenance cost. Property also has a tax bill every year, say two percent, one percent, half a percent. That's the second problem. The third problem is that you can't decompose property into a million little pieces, ship it all around the world, and recompose the property. So property doesn't serve as money very well. It's hard to break off a tenth of your building and buy a car with a tenth of a building. These are three valuable pieces of info for anyone planning out their financial goals. Just because the rich hold real estate doesn't mean that it's easy or even worthwhile in some cases. Using physical properties as assets come with a whole load of real-world implications and challenges. This doesn't mean real estate isn't effective and won't be worth holding down the road. You certainly wouldn't regret owning property, but that doesn't mean that there aren't better options out there. This is an emerging concept as our society continues to become more virtual each year. Another solid example that Saylor talked about when it came to stores of wealth was gold. Historically, gold has been a popular way to hold value over time. In our day, the weaknesses of traditional methods like gold have become visible. Saylor put it simply when he said, "The problem with gold coins is that the gold coins only be worth one tenth as much in 100 years or in 50 years." As it is today, and the other problem is I can't easily move them around. I want to move one billion dollars of gold from here to Tokyo takes three months and five million dollars. I can't decompose it and recompose it. What once seemed a foolproof and foundational way to retain value is now showing cracks. As technology and economic systems advance, new forms of wealth management are appearing. Gold, while still valuable, is paling in comparison to modern versions. Of assets like cryptocurrency, it's easier, faster, and decentralized. Gold just doesn't check any of these boxes. The other major point that Michael Saylor covered on the podcast was his viewpoint on what role crypto serves or should serve. According to him, cryptocurrency is the worst term because legally it's not a currency. Crypto money is an intellectual term, but the problem is most people equate money with currency, so they come down to the same cognitive traps. Crypto property is much better. You may have noticed us using the term cryptocurrency judiciously throughout this channel. We'll continue to refer to such in the rest of this video as well. That being said, he makes a great point. As of now, Bitcoin is not considered an actual currency in most countries around the world. As we've discussed thus far, Saylor truly looks at it as an asset to store wealth rather than a currency to buy and sell with. He uses El Salvador to prove his point. El Salvador has got a lot of friction because they're characterizing it as a currency and not property. If they had simply said we're going to use the dollar as a medium of exchange and then we're going to use Bitcoin as a store of value, and Bitcoin is property and the dollar is currency, you would have had none of these sparks flying around. To give you some context, El Salvador rolled out a government-endorsed crypto wallet, passed a law requiring every vendor in the country to accept Bitcoin. Because of how hard the cryptocurrency was being pushed on the population, many people adopted it immediately. The morning after the system was rolled out, 
Bitcoin's value dropped by $10,000. Regardless of why the price dropped, it was a tough lesson on why it may not be the time for Bitcoin to be used as a national currency just yet. The volatile price of crypto and the faulty online wallets distributed by the government put a terrible taste in El Salvador's mouth. Even though citizens weren't required to convert their dollars to Bitcoin, the resulting mess and poor rollout was not a great look. A lack of transparency from the government and the private company it founded to oversee the Bitcoin adoption didn't help the situation much. This is essentially why Michael Saylor sees crypto as property rather than currency. He feels that it isn't smart to hold Bitcoin with the intention of using it as a day-to-day -day currency. While the dollar may fluctuate and inflate artificially, it does present a more stable and streamlined process for using the money than you would hold in your checking account. Bitcoin is much more volatile than the dollar and there's no telling where it will be next month. But if you're approaching it from a much wider perspective, it becomes a viable asset. We'll quote Saylor again here when he says, if you're gonna buy any long dated asset, but especially if you're gonna buy property, and if you're gonna buy Bitcoin, if you wouldn't hold it for a decade, you shouldn't hold it for 10 minutes. Basically, if you don't have diamond hands, crypto might not be for you. Those holding Bitcoin as they're spending money will become fearful when their funds suddenly drop by 10% and rightfully so. Most people agree that Bitcoin is expected to sharply increase in value over time, but the general consensus is that it will take years. As for the next few months, the situation is as bullish as it is bearish. So if you don't use your crypto as currency, how are you supposed to use it? Teach me. If you have been keeping up to date with the Profit Protection channel, this might sound very familiar. In our last video covering the MicroStrategy CEO, we mentioned a gem he dropped during an interview with Tom Bilyeu. It's very rare that you find a technology that's a solution to every rich person's problem and every poor person's problem simultaneously. The nature of cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin, reveals the best opportunity we have ever seen in financial history for storing wealth. Whether you call yourself rich or poor, the same principles apply. Using Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation and a place to store money is something that benefits anyone who lives in our economy. If you've been following, you'll understand that an investment strategy involving Bitcoin should be made with the far future in mind. Michael Saylor's theory on this is very clear. If you are attempting to collect Bitcoin to use as currency throughout your week, chances are you will end up in a turbulent financial situation. If you are looking for the ideal asset to hold, protected from inflation over decades, it could be exactly what you're looking for. You should be using cryptocurrency as your option for storing wealth. Many people don't view crypto as property that they hold. This is partly because our class system in most countries attributes property to the elite alone. Crypto is turning that notion on its head. You no longer need $300,000 before buying a property to protect your wealth. Now, you can pick up a fraction of a Bitcoin here and there as you slowly build your portfolio of assets. It will still be a while before Bitcoin reaches a point where it can be viable as a widespread currency. The reality is, is that we are still in the early stages of the game. Calling it a cryptocurrency at this point can distract you from its most useful function, as we've gone over in this video. Here's one last quote from Michael Saylor's interview on Mick Williams' podcast to drive this point home. The entire world would shift to dollars and Bitcoin if they could move them on crypto rails at the speed of light. The problem is a lot of people can't figure out how to do that yet. And still, a lot of people in the world misunderstand what Bitcoin is. We still have a ways to go before both countries and their populations fully embrace cryptocurrency. Until then, it's in your best interest to hold crypto with the intention of keeping it tucked away for safekeeping. It may not line up with the hype from internet investment gurus, but Bitcoin isn't a get-rich-quick scheme, nor is it as dependable for groceries as the cash in your wallet. At least, not yet. Now, there are people out there that definitely have another view on crypto. The manager of the largest hedge fund in the world, Ray Dalio, recently said that he believes crypto may be outlawed. We made a video on that where we explained three ways in which you can protect yourself from the danger of your cryptocurrency being outlawed by the government. You can watch it here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit those like and subscribe buttons so we can continue to bring you quality analysis and updates on the latest from the thought leaders in the financial world. See you next time.